Hello guys, what's up? My name is Andrew Ching. I'm in Shenzhen, China, and today is the car show. Let's check it out. Welcome to the 22nd Shenzhen Hong Kong Macau International Auto Show. The heat of summer wasn't nearly enough to overwhelm my hype. Today, I'm going to show you some highlights as well as some interesting cars in the auto show. Let's go! First up, we have the new Ford Mustang. While there isn't much change in the front, it's got a newly designed rear. Those LED tail lights now have a white tone in them. The black trim looks more sporty, and the interior are your typical Mustang, but those switches and flippers look well made. This particular one is a four-cylinder Mustang that only has a Mustang emblem. This is a Toyota Crown. Though not familiar to the North American market, it is an executive-level luxury sedan by Toyota, placed between the Toyota and a Lexus. You can still see Camry's design elements on this car, but with more leather, bigger space, and more wood trim decorations, this car provides a much better ride than the normal Camry and is well known in the Asian market. Honda presented the new concept sedan, the Inspire. Unfortunately, they did not disclose much about this car other than its exterior. All we know was that it's got a new, more slicker and more aggressive design than the Honda Accord. It is a hybrid and it's got some beautiful paint. Here is also a race car version of the Civic hatchback. And I just love looking at the crazy bodywork and the absolutely raw to the touch interior. Back to Toyota, we saw a different face, the Mirai. Not only it was it one of the more futuristic Toyotas I've ever seen, its power also runs entirely on hydrogen. Well, basically very green. In the Jaguar showroom, they did not have the F-Type, but they brought out two hybrid and electric models, the I-Pace and the E-Pace. It makes sense, since making non-gas cars in a country where population and traffic literally explodes is a smarter decision to attract more customers. Range Rover had their usual stuff. Here is a convertible Evoque, which looks a bit short with the roof down. Here is a Velar with a beautiful styling and apparently won some car awards in the past year. And let's not forget about the Range Rover Vogue. Time for the Germans. The Volkswagen showroom was very colorful. We have the new Golf GTI with this red accent over the bodywork. This new electric e-Golf with blue styling. And my favorite of them all, the Beetle Orange Edition. I love the newly designed headlights the classic wheel option, and of course, its interior, which has every bit of orange touch to it. Not overwhelming, but very positive and pleasing to the eye for sure. This countryman got my attention with this tent on the top. Perhaps you can now sleep in the tent while your friends drive you around. And how do you get in and get out of there without scratching the paint. Hmm. The inside of Mini Cooper remains its classic design with the rounded shape all over the places. And it may be the lighting, but they definitely look more defined and refined than the previous generation. BMW was packed of people. While most people went straight to the more family-friendly sedans and coupes, I took a look at this year's M2 and M5. The M2 was in its signature color, which was featured on the commercials. 
And this year, BMW put a 3-liter inline-6 engine that was used in the M3 with 365 horsepower and 343 pound-feet of torque and can do 0 60 in just 4.2 seconds. The M5 was even crazier with an updated 4.4-liter twin-turbocharged V8 that puts out 600 horsepower and 553 pound-feet of torque and can do 0 to 60 in a smoking 3.2 seconds. This is supercar territory. Here are some new BMW 5 Series Li which have longer wheelbase. Those are BMW adaptive LED headlights. They turn to the direction you are heading. The dashboard has gone full LED as well. Love this matte silver paint on this BMW 4 Series. This right here is a hidden gem. This is the M760 Li. Not to mention that it cost over 2.48 million Chinese yuan, which is about $389,000. But this monster's got a V12 6.6 liter turbocharged engine with 600 horsepower and 590 pound feet of torque. And with its new 8 speed transmission, this thing can go from 0 to 60 in just 3.7 seconds. With a car of this size and weight, its performance is truly impressive. Here we have the Audi showroom, starting with some artistic performances. Audi got their lighting game right. Here is the new TT RS. While basic design remains the same, those new taillights introduced in 2017 are still among one of my favorites. Here we also have the RS6 Avant and some other cars. All are performance beasts, but this RS7 Sportsback performance is particularly gorgeous. You got the newly designed headlights and taillights and this beautiful dark silver matte paint. Imagine driving this car under the moonlight. You would be the shadow of night. Really cool looking and the interiors are so well put together. You get what you pay for. And the RA Spider, again a beautiful car. This is one of the few cars with a V10 engine and this particular one has a 5.2 liter FSI dual injection V10 that produces 532 horsepower and 398 pound-feet of torque. This is the base model and thus does 0 to 60 in 3.5 seconds. Still very impressive. Though I'm not a fan of this color combination, I wish it was the black and white classic Audi RA that was being showcased today. Now is my favorite, Porsche. To celebrate its 17th birthday, Porsche proudly placed the new Panamera Turbo S e Hybrid Sport Turismo at the brightest spot. Being a station wagon, this thing has the same twin turbocharged 4 liter V8 with addition of an electric motor and outputs a total of 680 horsepower. L060 in 3.2 seconds with an impressive top speed of 192 miles per hour. Looking into the interior of this car, and I apologize for all the fingerprints here, but what you get is a very clean center console. You see, everything here is actually hidden and they do not show up until you turn the car on and everything here comes to life. This car is equipped with a Sport Chrono package which allows you to select different driving modes by rotating this little knob. And you also get this great looking dashboard mixed with mechanics speedometer and LED display. Notice that the car wraps to about 7,000 RPM. The door doesn't close entirely by itself, but a little push is all you need. Someone actually bought this 718 Cayman on today's auto show. The always classy 911. No matter which angle you look, this is one beautiful and timeless sports car. This year, the new design is mainly in the back, 
where the tail lights runs across the rear. It looks like the trend is to have long tail lights now. And don't you think it kind of resembles the 911s from 15 years ago with this red line across the back? Open the back lid. You have easy access to oil change and coolant. But this is all you get, and you don't get to see one of the greatest engines in the world. Coming to the front, pull this red latch and you get a front trunk, which is where you put most of your stuff. Challengers wanted. This 911 GT3 RS being on the top of 911s, aside from the crazy bodyworks and spoilers and wings, it's loaded with a 4 liter Boxer 6 water cooled engine that outputs 520 horsepower and 346 pound feet of torque, capable of doing 0 to 60 in just 3 seconds with a top speed of 193 miles per hour. If you look closely at the front emblem, it is actually not. This is a piece of decal. Opening the door, you can also find the handle has been replaced by the rope. You might think, did I pay tens and thousands of dollars for a Porsche with these? No, you paid for some of the most extreme weight-saving measures in the world. Looking into the interior, you can see that a lot of things are made of expensive carbon fibers and they also took away the back seat to save more weight. Next to the 911 GT3 RS is the 2017 Le Mans LMP1 car. I could only imagine what it is like to drive in this machine for 4 hours straight. The Cayenne also follows the new taillight trend in the lineup. And wait. Nice. You probably know AMG and Brabus, but you probably don't know Lorenzo. This is also the company that modifies Mercedes cars and was established even before AMG and Brabus. Here is a modified V250 by this company. Walking into Mercedes-Benz showroom, I was instantly wowed by its look. This is probably the best looking showroom on today's auto show but it is packed with people and I couldn't get a closer look at different cars. Still, I can show you some cars that's being showcased. Here is the new S560 Maybach. The all new CLS Coupe Edition 1. The new AMG GT. and the better looking C63S. Now it's time for the exotics. Lamborghini had the latest creations out. This right here is Urus. Although being an SUV, it isn't lack of any performance with a 4 liter bi turbo charged V8 with 650 horsepower. It's got 8 gears and it's 4 wheel drive. Weighing at just 4,850 pounds, it is lighter than most of its competitors such as the Porsche Cayenne and the Bentley Bentayga. Maximum torque is 627 pound feet and a top speed of a freaking 190 miles per hour and 0 to 60 in just 3.6 seconds. Friends, this is not an SUV, this is a Lambo disguised with the SUV bodywork. Let's not forget about the 2019 Aventador S Roadster. This blue bowl is equipped with the 6.5 liter V12 that runs at freaking 729 horsepower with 509 pound feet of torque. Top speed is at 217 miles per hour, and a 7 speed gearbox lets you do 0 to 60 in merely 3 seconds. Being an absolute supercar, the Aventador S Roadster is screaming for attention with its sharp styling and signature scissor doors. On the British side, we have Bentley as the starter, and the star is definitely the Mousson. It definitely looks like a pile of cash. A white front face and giant grille that runs underneath the bumper. And the car is finished with the two-toned metallic purple and grey. Here is also the Continental GT. 
and Bentayga. Right across from Bentley is Rolls Royce. Excitingly and unsurprisingly, Rolls Royce presented their first ever SUV, the Cullinan. A full sized SUV with a 6.5 liter V12 that does 0 to 60 in. <coughs> it doesn't matter when comfort and luxury comes to the top. Fun fact of Rolls Royce is that if you look at the center of the wheels, you see that the RR logo is perfectly pointing downward. That's because they're weighted. So, when you are driving one of these, you can't be mistaken for driving something else other than a Rolls Royce. We also have the Phantom, also finished in two-tone purple and white, like the Musana across the showroom. It further proves that, when done right, purple looks absolutely stunning on these luxury kings and queens. Enough of me talking bros, let's appreciate these British beauties. On the side of Aston Martin, in the front you get the DB11, also in purple. Another DB11, but convertible. And the four-door Rapide. Although the DB11 remains one of the best-looking sports cars in the world, that's my opinion, this new face stands out the most. This is the completely redesigned Vantage, and I can express how sharp and edgy it looks in person. Aston Martin described the new design as James Bond's DB10 enhanced by the stance of a Vulcan, which I agree. A 4-liter twin-turbo VA granting it 503 horsepower and 505 pound-feet of torque. The new Vantage is a 195 mph car that can go 0-60 to in 3.6 seconds. If it's not in the next Bond movie, I don't know what will. The Acura NX Act is quite lonely. Though I personally think it's a very cool car, it didn't get many audience because it is an Acura, which is sad. Although Ferrari wasn't in the auto show today, red wasn't absent. I have to admit that Mazda's red approach looks darn good. I also saw this Hongqi H5 luxury sedan. Hongqi is a Chinese manufacturer that makes the president's ride a Cadillac in the United States. They're moving towards local markets now, and they're on their way up. Would you look at these wheels? Those wheels are definitely signs that the car is for serious fun. Those were some highlights of the auto show. I hope you enjoyed this video. The auto show was a great starting event for this new channel and I will soon be reviewing different individual cars through the scope of a regular college guy. If you could leave a comment, a like, or subscribe, that would be awesome. Thank you for watching, have a great day, and I will see you in the next video.